Hello, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, I'm going to show you 10, count them. Yes, I have 10 fingers or you weirdos that say, you've actually got eight fingers and two thumbs. I've got 10 of them, tips for OBS Studio, and I guarantee that most of these you can do within a couple of minutes. Quality of life, improvements, OBS Studio tips. We're gonna be listing them out, we're gonna be rattling through them nice and quick, and I guarantee you're gonna enjoy quickly implementing these on your stream, and it will make your life much easier. If you enjoy this, hit the like, feel free to subscribe, and let's go. First up, a quick word from my sponsors. Owned.pro was a plugin specifically for OBS Studio. You literally install this, and from there, you can install one click overlays from Owned.pro. You can install alerts from Owned Pro. It's a really, really good tool. I've tried this out myself. I absolutely love it myself, and I'm sure you'll like it too. And the best part is, if you use Code Machine at checkout when you take out a pro subscription with Owned Pro, you'll get 50% off the subscription cost. You'll also be supporting the channel, so that's a thanks from me, and hopefully you enjoy it. Check out own.pro and let me know how you get on. So this first one is long overdue with OBS Studio, but they released in 27.2 the ability to hide OBS Studio when you're recording. So this is particularly useful for somebody that doesn't want to run two versions of OBS Studio and you're recording OBS Studio itself. Or if you've just got OBS Studio running, you want to be able to open up OBS Studio on a single monitor if you don't have more than one monitor, but you don't want OBS Studio to then show itself. Traditionally, what this looks like is this you'll see you get this doubling up effect where yeah it kind of looks a little bit rubbish what we're trying to do here is see what's underneath the desktop but also we as the streamer or as the recording person someone recording a video on obs studio we want to be able to not see what's underneath but see what's happening in obs studio a simple way to do this first of all you do need to check that you're updated to version I think it's 22.2 is the version where this was implemented. If you're on an older version, you cannot do this. We need to go into settings here on the bottom right hand corner, and then we simply click hide OBS window from screen capture. When I click this button and hit apply, you'll see immediately you cannot see OBS Studio. But I'm telling you, I can see OBS Studio right now in front of me. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is when I've applied it to one OBS Studio, it's actually applied that same thing to the other OBS Studio. So the version that I'm recording in now also can't see the other version of OBS. So what I'm having to do is put up some mobile phone footage just to prove that it, this doubling up effect has disappeared. Some people will find this really, really useful. It's a great way to just remove OBS Studio, get rid of that doubling up effect. Simple, straightforward, and takes just a second to do. Next up, if you're streaming on Twitch, you're probably not using a lot of the docs that are available in OBS Studio. There's a reasonable chance that quite a few of you are using Stream Manager from Twitch. Now, I'm an actual fan of Twitch's Stream Manager. It's a great little tool. The thing is, almost all of the information within Stream Manager, you can get into OBS Studio, which means you don't have to be running a Stream tab, a Chrome tab, or something like that, which then means you've got more computer resources to make sure that your stream's running smoothly. It's all in one place, along with the preview of your stream, and that preview is coming from OBS Studio rather than Twitch, which means the OBS Studio preview that you'll see is real time, unlike the version that you would see in Stream Manager. This takes around about two or three minutes to set up, and it's dead, dead easy. It just means you send centralize all your information and you can get rid of those dirty Chrome browser tabs that have got Stream Manager on there. So as you can see with my OBS Studio here, I've got my chat, I've got my activity feed, I've got my stream information here, and I've got all my Twitch stats here, as well as all the normal things you would have in OBS Studio, including a preview of my stream, which as I say, is real time if it's in OBS Studio. Whereas if you're in Stream Manager, the preview isn't real time. Now the way that you would do this is first of all within your settings, settings, you do need to go into stream and you need to make sure that you've co connected your Twitch account to your OBS Studio. Once you've done that, OBS Studio can pull in all of that data and information automatically. Now, you do need to make sure that you are updated again to one of the newer versions of OBS Studio because they did remove some of those abilities recently and I think it was some sort of weird legacy reason as to why they did that. So if you find that this isn't working for you now, it probably means that you've got an older version of OBS Studio and you can quickly update that on help and check for updates you can get the latest version from here so under the stream tab once you've connected your twitch and hit apply what you'll see is that the stream 
chat and activity feeds will appear. If they don't appear under the docs section here in OBS Studio, it's all of these here. Now, some of these are default in OBS Studio, but then you've also got chat, stream information, Twitch stats, and Twitch activity feed are docs that you can enable or disable. So for example, the Twitch activity feed, I can remove view of that, and then I've only got the Twitch information. If I go back onto docs and quick click on the activity feed, I can see that this becomes available again. And again, you can place these wherever you want to place them on your OBS Studio to suit your needs. Now, one that I overlooked for a long, long time was actually the dock for the Twitch stats themselves. And that was the main reason why I actually kept Stream Manager open on Chrome for a long, long time. But this is available. And as you can see, it was located there. So again, in docs, Twitch stats, you've got this little dock here, which we can just place. And that will show you all of your viewership information whilst you are streaming, meaning you don't any longer need Twitch Stream Manager. OBS Studio tip and hint number three that will make your life a lot easier when you are streaming is to use hotkeys within OBS Studio to control different things in your stream, particularly preview mode on OBS Studio and studio mode. I use this every single stream and again it helps free up pc resources so that i can run a really simple smooth stream a lot of people don't know that when you're running preview mode on obs studio it takes up additional pc resources because the screen's having to be rendered on either your current screen or elsewhere within your pc if you disable preview mode you get those resources back and obs will use up less of your pc's resources the way you would find these is under the settings section here and under hotkeys here you've got all the different things that you can apply a hotkey for and you can enable and disable most of them in which case most of the time you can just use the same hotkey and press it once to enable and press it again to disable so control shift and p for example will enable preview for me and then doing it again will disable the preview and then studio mode for the same thing control shift and p on my keyboard will enable the preview mode there or disable it and then if i do it again it will enable the preview mode. Control Shift and S will be studio mode. And again, Control Shift and S again will get rid of studio mode. There's loads of other hotkeys that you can assign, but that is just the ones that I use that make my life a lot easier when I'm streaming, when I want to toggle between being able to see what my stream is showing and not. I have done a more detailed video about this a long, long time ago, so it's a very old video. Check out on the card there. You'll be able to see a little bit more detail on how to set them up. And I've also set them up on my stream deck for extra convenience using the hotkey trigger on stream deck, which is also super easy to set up too. Another tip I've got here is to have things like this a placeholder image that sits at the bottom of every single source so that no matter what is going on in your stream there'll always be at the bottom level an image that you want to be displayed in my case i've got this cool looking looking for game let's go silly branding thing i've put that at the bottom of my source list now because i'm using nested scenes it's not actually contained in this particular scene here i've put it in my base assets which i'll show you in a second but if you want to know more about nested scenes i've done a brilliant video all about that and again i will link the video for that nested scenes above here on the card and also down below in the description so the way that you do this i've got a folder called live scene base assets raw and md placeholder image 1920 by 1080 and that is literally just an image placed at the very bottom of all my sources so even if the game capture or the display capture both happen to be turned off there will be an image that will display as a last resort and it just makes you look a little bit more professional now because i add this scene to all of my main scenes i'm not having to add all these things every single time which is the benefit of nesting again check that video out if you want to know more about that obs studio tip number five is to use effective descriptions for your scenes and sources but especially for your scenes and i'll run through this in detail and hopefully it'll give you some inspiration on how you could set up your scenes and sources now if you're anything like me you'll have a metric ton of scenes and sources here and keeping them well organized is really really important so the first tip i've got as part of this is to use dummy scenes like this one with no sources in them whatsoever and just have a name of for this which just lists all the different types of scenes that relate to that so for me i have my main scenes toggled under this scene here this has no sources in it and i've just placed all the other scenes that are the main scenes under this section and i've used dashes as part of that description just to segment it so if i right click and press rename on that we can update this and change the name of it if i then go further down i've then got scenes as full ready sources so these are the final sources that i'm adding into my scenes and then i've got composite scenes scenes that contain multiple different raw scenes and then i've got raw sources and scenes here so essentially what happens is you've got finalized scenes at the top and then you've got more granular scenes at the very bottom and the 
lower down the list you go, the less important those scenes are in terms of the day-to-day -day streaming activities. This brings me neatly on to tip number six for OBS Studio here because I use numbering to be able to allow me to determine quickly where the camera positioning is for a particular scene. You can see here, I've got this numbering system. Very, very basic. If it's zero, it doesn't relate to camera being in any particular place on the scene. So at the moment, if I click on that, the camera is actually full. Uh, you can't see it because I'm using the camera here, but that would be a full screen scene. But you can see I've also got the description as well. So it's really clear what that does to me when I'm quickly streaming. The number ones down here would indicate any scene where the camera is on the left hand side. The number threes down here would indicate where the, the camera is on the right hand side. And if it's a two at the start, it means the camera is in the middle somewhere. So in the middle of the bottom here. And for me, I've also got the one, two, three after. So it's the point one, point two, point three. And that just indicates whereabouts on the screen on the left hand side or whereabouts on the screen it is on the right hand side. The result is when you're streaming on OBS Studio, on Twitch or YouTube gaming or whatever, you can effortlessly switch between the scenes without even thinking about it, which means you can focus on the content you're delivering to your viewers. Another really important tip that I use and tip number seven for OBS Studio here is locking in place your sources if you do not intend on moving them. Everyone gets this. You can sometimes accidentally just move a source or a see without even really realizing that you've done it and then at a later stage you come back and think what the hell was I doing there so if I know for example that my live scene with all of those base assets that I talked about earlier I'm not going to move I'm always going to want those full sized on my OBS studio I'm going to just click this icon here which will lock it in place once I've placed it and sized it to the right level this just means I'm never really wasting time messing around with scenes and sources because I know that they're coded properly I know that I've got the headers here and I know that they're locked in place when you get down to source level. OBS tip number eight is to use edit transform to precisely locate exactly where you want to put your sources. And this is particularly effective if you then lock them in place using the tip that I just went through. You may not know, but you can precisely to the pixel place sources wherever you want to on OBS studio. So the way that we do this, I'm just going to unlock one of these sources. Let's say the webcam here, and I can see here now the outline of that source and I'm able to move this source now that I've unlocked it. Now, if I right click on this source or if I right click on it on the panel here on the preview, and if I go to transform and edit transform, I can now see the exact positional location, rotation, sizing, positional, all sorts of other stuff, including crop for that particular source. So if I want to move it literally just one pixel to the left, I can simply just amend these digits here, for example, like that. And you'll see there was a slight movement of that camera. Why is this important? Well, the reason why this is important, particularly when you're looking at webcams and things like that, if I've got a webcam, let's say positioned over here, and I want to have the exact same location camera, but over on the right hand side, I can simply right click the source, look at trans edit transform, and I can see what the X and Y axis are for this. So I can see it's 14 pixels away there, and 14 pixels there on that side, which then means when I go to my top right hand corner camera, which would be 3.1 here, you can see it moved over there. I'm going to unlock this source and we can see it. If I right click this again, click transform, click edit transform, and we see it's 14 pixels from the top. So we've got precise positional locations and resizing and cropping and rotations, all of that kind of stuff using edit transform, nice and easy within OBS Studio. Tip number nine for OBS Studio. We've all had it, I'm sure, at least once before where you've started recording a video by accident, not realized, or maybe you've stopped recording and not realized and had to re-record everything again in OBS Studio, or even worst case scenario, you've gone live without even knowing in OBS Studio that you've gone live to Twitch and you sat there doing all kinds of weird stuff. Maybe you're like talking about how bad your audience is and all that weird stuff, okay? So what we need to do is enable the confirmations, which are a double check that you're actually wanting to do the actions that you may otherwise be doing by accident. The way that we check those is we go into settings here in OBS Studio, and it's these outputs here. We want to show Show confirmation dialogue when starting streams. Show confirmation dialogues when stopping the streams. Show confirmation dialogue when stopping recordings. So these are just automatic things that you can do. Certainly these top three, you would benefit yourself by just having them. It does mean that you spend an extra second or two confirming it every single time you go live. However, it means that you will basically never accidentally go live and embarrass yourself in front of your audience.
Now the final tip, tip number seven for OBS Studio that will really improve your life here is to hide all of the unused audio sources. You may not know it, but a lot of sources where they might be visual sources will also have an audio track assigned to it. And that's just to do with the way that the media files come in. Perhaps it's to do with the codec or whatever. However, in many cases, those audio sources you don't actually want to come through or they may just be dummy audio sources that are there visually, but not actually doing anything. And the way that you do this, you'll probably see a long list of audio sources in your audio mixer here you can just right click and hide certain audio sources and i'm going to show you exactly what this looks like when you unhide them i'm going to unhide them all now and you can see there's a lot more sources of mine that are not being used at all so in my case i've actually muted sources and then i've right clicked and hid them and i've one by one made sure i've muted them and hid them and what this means is that you're rarely going to be at risk of having issues with echoing on your stream sometimes for example if you change something up you move something around you unplug something turn it on and off it can reset the caching inside obs studio which then means that you can get doubled up audio and then you're having to sort that out potentially whilst you are live you don't want to do that so by muting them in the first place and then right clicking and hiding them you're not at risk of that happening so that was 10 different tips for obs studio it will make your life a million times easier tips hacks guidance just great stuff that you can do very quickly and very easily inside of obs studio if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the like leave a comment and let me know which ones you actually implemented on your stream and have a great day take care